Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We live on Twitch. We live on Twitch. Check, 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 mic check. We ain't been here in a minute. Make sure everything <laughs> works. Everything works. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> let me just that's bless true. let me just bless y'all and, and everybody here for coming. Uh housekeeping notes real quick. If you're watching live on Twitch, please, please feel free to drop those subs. Say hello in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, Hit that like and subscribe button. You can leave a message. You can say all the things you want to say. I know you haven't seen Moose in a minute. You can say whatever you want to say. You can talk about his guitar on the wall. 
any little thing you could talk about. My guy, Brian, the producer is back there. Brian, say hello to the people real quick so they know you're here. All right. As I said, so we already know Moose is here. My girl Bond is here. Moose, before we start, though, where have you been? Where the hell? Listen. <laughs> this happened in the video. Much <laughs> like Jimmy Butler, I am back from my first half sabbatical. Let's go. Playoff run, baby. Uh, uh, Bond, would you like to say hello to the people? Moose, is, Moose and Jimmy, like he said, out here like a shanty, you know, not always there when you call, but damn it, baby, I'm always on time. Oh, oh hey, hey, give it to <laughs> us, give it to us. My, oh. Yes, Moose. <laughs> baby, All right, Moose. Baby. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're gonna that's, jump that's into it. That's all we can it. legally sing until that's it. Don't get us, after. yeah, don't, 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 don't even get us struck like that. All right, we're gonna jump right into it. So, it's the second half of the season. I don't know how we made it through the first half, y'all. Yeah. We, 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 we used it with duct tape, gorilla glue, <laughs> a cement mixer, and we are here. I don't know how, but we are here. So, <laughs> Can we go on a run to get? First of all, we have to go out, go on a run to get out of this play-in. Can we? And if we can, what needs to happen? Moose, what do you got? Uh, I'll give you two things. Number one, just like me returning, Jimmy Butler's got to return. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's got to throw on the cape from day one, but let's be honest, he's got to throw on the cape <laughs> from day one. Mission control. Shit's about to get a little dicey here, okay? We're at a point now where we can make a run and get out of it, or this could be just like last year. And I mean that in both ways. Like, I still believe in Jimmy. I think it's a little bit arrogant and unfair of us, though, to ask or Thank expect you. the same yeah. run, you know? So yeah. the reason I said I'm going to give you two things is Jimmy, number one, but number two, Spo, continue to develop the younger guys, Ooh. okay? You are going to need Jaime. You are going to need Nico. Yes, you're going to need Nico. You're going to need yes. everybody, yeah. but particularly the young guys. I don't want to see them getting lost in the rotation because that tends to happen when Spo mm. starts to get a little bit tighter and figuring out, you know, what's this second half run going to be like. So just make sure you find a way to continue giving them their minutes along with the stars because they got to figure it out before this crucial, you know, play in uh, areas nearer. Go ahead, Bon. Yeah, you, you know, it depends. What Now, when we say on a run, right, uh -huh. like how long are we talking uh -huh. You know, I, we, I'm, I'm talking. Marathon, we got no girl, like, uh uh. So, we got to do some jaunts and then yeah. we're gonna jog and then we're gonna do right. a couple of more jaunts and you then we're gonna, gonna go jog, high knees. You know? We're gonna high knee, uh, but we're gonna slap them. Uh, we're gonna slap them. Ow, ow, I, yeah, ow. yeah. Okay, um, okay. Because I'm we, we, we got to get out of the play in. Mm -hmm. right. so, how, so, <laughs> so, what, so, how are we gonna I'm do that? That's yeah. it. You know, yeah, it can start start strong, finish stronger. You know, I think that we can, um, much like what, what Moose said. I do think, you know, largely it's a bunch of Jimmy, right? Post-All-Star mm -hmm. Jimmy has typically been, you know, where we see Jimmy rev it up. I don't even know if we can, like, factually say it's the last half of the season. Isn't it only, like, 27-some games it left? Is. Like, it is. Yeah, like, we're, like, at the last, you know, like, quarter Supper. of some yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe i'm um, hungry but yeah you know like we said it's it's gonna be a lot of jimmy of course um i i i hearken you know i i agree with his with his um assessment of the young guys keeping them involved we've already mm -hmm. seen you know even throughout the course of the season nicola and you know mind you we have people out right nicola had a great stretch of time and then we get kayla back we get josh back we, you know, and then he falls out of the rotation. He had a great quote the other day. It was like, I either start or I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> Most That's accurate thing it. he's ever said in his right. life. You know, uh, Jaime, right, had that timeout kind of his back. But, you know, not only does it, you know, pin on Jimmy and those two, this hopefully is the first time in a long time that we'll have the three. I don't know if they're big. I can call them little. I'm just calling them the three that we have. Jimmy, all of it. Of oh, there we go. I'm here. We lost you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you know, there you we go. have 
that we have them for the duration of of the playoffs, right? And so we need to mm-hmm. see Jimmy, you know, ramp it up, do the Jimmy things. But we, what we've always been talking about, Tyler, Bam, be effective, be productive around those two guys. Duncan, stay online. Like we're going to need you. You know, Duncan went through his, you know, few game stretch of not shooting well or whatever, but came back with a vengeance. You know, shout out to Jalen Brown. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bunch of kind of things. Um, and unfortunately we kind of have been, you know, uh, pressing a bit, like, you know, mm-hmm. we, ha- we're behind. So the screws have been tightening maybe a little bit quicker than, than Spo would have wanted them with regards to rotations, but we're here now and, you know, everything, you know, every, it's time to polish up everything. And I think that we can go on the run. I, I, lastly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land the plane. I really appreciate Moose's stating that it feels a bit arrogant to just assume mm-hmm. because I feel like Heat fans, we do this all the time, right? We've done it. We can do it. You know, F you, y'all suck. Did it. And while all of that may be true or whatever, you know, you still approach the game with a level of respect and you approach your opponents who have the, the, the same goal in, in their mind's eye as you do. So, you know, right. we have the pieces, I guess, but it all has to be put together. Right. I agree. And this <clears throat> and this is what makes it easier to transition into this next topic, because I, y- you know, I am I am one for Jimmy doing what needs to be done. Right. But Jimmy's been doing what needed to be done for quite some time now. It, Too long. It, is there a point where we're going to start to say that this cape is tattered? Bond, what do you think? You know, I, I think, yes. But I think that because the season up to this point has been what it was for Jimmy, you know, um, had he been, you know, kind of balls to the wall the whole, you know, stretch of the season, probably definitely, you know, a, a, a bit more tattered than what may be. Um, my hope is that, you know, there's some there's some holes there, but it's largely intact and largely, you know, is is still flyable. And again, we got these, you know, couple two co-pilots who can help steer this thing too. So it is probably a little worn down, but I genuinely don't believe it is, um, you know, shredded to the point of, of you know, not being not being available. Go ahead, Moose. Yeah, no, t- I mean, to echo Shabon's statements, because I totally agree. I think it's normal to expect some wear and tear on that cape because of the amount of work that he's put in. Yeah. But that's also why we or at least I, as a fan, am okay with him taking the first half kind of the way he does. Because I I know the aggressiveness that he's about to tackle these next 25 games or 25 plus, hopefully, uh, Mm -hmm. and the level of um, play that he's going to give us on both ends of the floor because he knows he has to do that for this team to to be what it is. And shout out to Bam, who for moments – really helped you know carry the team yeah. in the first half we need that to continue now with uh with jimmy coming back but yes I, my thing is i don't think it's it's gonna be the exact same jimmy from day one i do think there's gonna be a ramp up period like mm-hmm. i'm i'm being joking around here hey jimmy's gonna come back but i'm not expecting that jimmy game one tomorrow you know, right. I think there's going to be a few, maybe two weeks where you see him ramp it up. And then from there, it's going to be the Jimmy Butler that we know that he plays as in the crucial time. We're going to get that for the rest of the way. Let's save that juice for when we actually need it. And, you know, up until now, he's been doing that. So let's see. Right. And I'll say, <clears throat> first of all, I'll say, because there was a reason I titled this show Health Insurance. <laughs> I thought we got a sponsor. <laughs> I mean, there's anybody what, out there who would like exactly. <laughs> but, but that's that's also part of what's happening right now because it's two steps forward three steps back um because if you saw today it was reported tyler's probably out with a sore foot well you know he's been walking so <laughs> <laughs> You know, okay. so and and then we got Terry, who looks like he's ramping up to come back soon. So it's kind of like you're trying to do this puzzle, and every time you get to a part of the puzzle, there's a piece that's constantly missing. Yeah. So I think for me, this is where I worry because remember, we're not buying new pieces. Yeah. Jimmy's gonna have to fill all these holes that are that are left unfilled. 
So you know, me, you have a, you have an old puzzle and like the pieces <laughs> of the puzzle like start to fray a little uh -huh. bit. You know, it still fits, but it don't quite snap. It. So you push yeah, it like, and you push it. it. This is what we're doing right now, right? It'll work. It'll work. I promise. No, this is the right corner. It's this one. I know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. How about if I fold it a little bit and just slide fold it, it the opposite way of where it's bent? It'll snap. exactly. Mm -hmm. It'll just snap. Mm -hmm. So this is where. I think for me, this is where my where I'm more concerned is that he's going to have to overcompensate because we just can't keep all the guys in the rotation. But yeah. in that same breath, if you are in the rotation, you need to be rotationing. <laughs> Rotating, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, so, yes, as, as we already said, these young guys, they've yeah. been playing all season in and out the lineup they have been getting they've been getting heavy minutes they've been going up mm -hmm. against the league's best mm -hmm. so this is where i'm hoping all of that comes into play this is where i'm hoping because nico has got the starts jaime has got starts all these guys have been getting quality minutes so i'm hoping starting tomorrow we start to see some of these things just you know naturally come together yeah. not forcibly Absolutely. but but more naturally um I got I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the heat for a minute because I've been Kiki all week. Oh man <laughs> and Moose, I'm just gonna say it and it's coming to you. Is this Doc finally Love is blind? Because that's why I'm here. That's that's <laughs> that's what got me here. <laughs> I mean, this might be the we never know what this might turn into, but Moose, Doc versus the world. Go. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me in, Brass. <laughs> yeah, 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 Brass, bring me in, Brass. <laughs> okay, where do we want to start here? I got so much on Doc. I'm actually, Go. this is a great, I'm so glad we're going this way. Where Do we want to take it back to like when he actually took the job? Because I am, I, now that I'm back from my sabbatical, I got a lot of takes on this that I need to get off my chest real quick. <laughs> Bam. First of all, Doc, you know you wanted the job. Stop fucking around with the media. Bam. All right, that's number one. Number two, why are you saying all of these weird things like I wanted the job, but I'll take it after All-Star break? Actually, I told them not to give me the job, but I'm going to take the $40 million anyways. Like, I don't fully understand Doc's <laughs> endgame here. I really, truly don't. Because I, I think he kind of already knows, like, well, I'm not going to win it. Uh, so <laughs> is he, like, trying to go back to the booth after this? Like, I am so confused on this entire Doc situation. Shaban. What do you see with Doc Rivers, <laughs> and why is he the way he is? It is so annoying. <laughs> you know, I I agree. Like, why are you saying all of these things? P please stop talking. Like, yes. I want you to stop. Yes. Giannis, I want you to stop talking. It's not fucking Dame's team. It's still your team. Everybody's right. like hedging bets to try to like cover their ass <laughs> for what they know is about to be whatever it is. Doc chasing the bag. Sure, I guess we're going to but that, that's I'm not mad. Saying. Chase it. If you, if yeah, you yeah, chase yeah, yeah. it, then like be honest about it and like welcome the shit. Don't like you know got one arm around it, but like you know like, you ain't really got to give it to me. I, you you mm -hmm. you sure you don't want it back. I I was asking <laughs> but, the man why putting it in his pocket. Me? Putting it in his pocket. You, you sure? Because sure? I, 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 I really got to take child, it. I don't really think I deserve <laughs> all of this or whatever. But I don't know. Like I I don't know what his end game is either. Um, but it's been fun. I think you know the NBA goes on a break and folks just lose their mind. We just right. don't know what. Right. To do. <laughs> but what what we re but here's the thing about where I'm I'm confused about all of this. Right. You you took the job, right? Even though you were I don't know, were you mentoring Griffin? Like there was a relationship there. Was there? He was I like yes. trying to he was like trying to yes. get into the back door, but yes. he didn't want there to There was be a relationship known. there. Yes. And yes. you took the job. But then you didn't Ooh. want it. But then you wanted it after All Star break, as Moose said. Okay, what does so, that even? Why do you want it after All Star? Like, what is that? Because <laughs> girl, I wasn't ready to go to work yet. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, so you have said job. So now I'm kind of in this whole mode as to, but what kind of coach are you? Because mm -hmm. I, because we could get past all the tomfoolery, right? Like, okay, we're going to laugh and joke and heat Twitter. Yeah. We're going to have a ball with it. But the reality is, 
are they three and seven or it's something disgusting I think it's two and seven i think it's, it's two and seven it's, it's something disgusting since he got there so yeah, i don't even know how he got those two i'm gonna be honest ex- right he's the so most overrated coach like no disrespect to doc right. rivers because i know that he's earned his place somehow i honestly i don't even know that but he's just i don't understand his coaching and i'm sorry to cut you off tip but yeah. it's just the one thing that's really bothering me and i think this is what you were getting to is like okay you took the job embrace it now Embrace it and actually do something with it because I'll tell you what, and this is not me speculating in any way or anything like that, but there's no way in hell Dame is going to go with this. Like this is, this is not the type of coach that I think Dame would actually follow because I don't feel like doc rivers is actually taking on this job. Right. And Dame's one of those guys where it's like, if you're not a hundred percent in, then fuck off. And I think that's going to wear off very, very quickly on Dame. Well, I think the the interesting part is, and and Bond had already said it, where Giannis is 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 pushing the team to Dame, whereas he just he just came to the team. Right? How was this there? There, there, <laughs> there are no roots there. There there is no loyalty there. He is literally another guy on the team right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, it's kind of interesting where. Uh, Doc is adamant about all almost not even wanting the job, and Giannis is adamant about not wanting to the be pressure, the, leader. the, the, and the blame, pressure, the accountability, the, blame, the, lead, the leadership, the accountability. And it's like all of a sudden he lost his whole wherewithal. Like, and 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 I and I and and maybe part of that is because also, like, you got multiple people fired along the way. Well, ho, ho, ho. yeah, because I ain't seen that equipment manager either. <laughs> so, still looking for that so ball I, so i mean and and i'll say it and it's not being cocky or anything like that i don't think regardless of their record just watching what i've watched they aren't yeah. a good team yeah they're really not they're, they're not a team they're no. not a team that's and i feel like that's what a lot of it is they're not, there's there's no cohesion chris is still out I feel right. like people underestimate his whatever his production is. Yes, mm-hmm. people underestimate Chris's value to the his whole stability. of mm. what that group was. Drew and Dame are not the same players. No. They each have their they each have their pros. I guess they each have their cons. But again, with the overall structure kind of of mm. of what that is, I feel like it's easier. Not Drew easy fits. flat out. Drew fits, and it's it's easier to kind of form a defensive identity which Mm -hmm. milwaukee had then there is to figure out how the fuck do i make Giannis work offensively whereas the book is you know load up on him he's shooting whatever from three he i'll still live with him taking that it's a lot of it's it's more finesse and it's more like coaching acumen to try to get shit to you know Right. You know, how do I make the, all of this work offensive? But again, you have Dame and you have Giannis. Right. And so you should have a great pick and roll one, two type of thing. But you're missing Dame and you're right. you're leaking points. Everything you're scoring, you're kind of giving right back. Yeah. So, And uh, that's where I was going with it. Because I I always say the game starts on the defensive end. Always has to. And they're not, they're not stopping that's anybody. That's where it ends, too. It, yeah. Exactly. They're not stopping anybody. And it's also, the thing about it is, is that I think, a lot of coaches would also just struggle in this position, not the way doc is struggling, but I think they would struggle because of the way the team is built. Mm -hmm. You don't have, Mm -hmm. you don't have the two, you don't have two dogs up top, right? So you don't have two guards up top that get at you defensively. And then Brooke is not the same. And how, how much is Giannis going to make up for all of this? Right. No, I don't. I don't know if, if the thought had ever been put into place to say maybe Malik Beasley isn't the best guy to have next today. Mm. Correct. Malik Um, is somebody that you have just like an ancillary piece. I need you to knock down shots and do whatever. I you shouldn't be asking Malik to do you know heavy heavy lifting. Exactly. So I think that's like that's a huge problem because like I said, we could laugh about all of that, but that um. Even when you saw when we just played them, there yes. were pos- there were possessions where we moved the ball and and we got Dame on love, right. like yeah. like and and that was just that's that's just easy pickings. Mm-hmm. Right. So 
regardless of who's there, there's just problems there anyway. And then, like you said, we're trying to hot potato it. It's your team, it's your team, it's your team. And that whole dangerous pick and roll that we thought they were going to have, I ain't seen it. Right. Yeah. It's like and you know, pick Tiff, and stumble. Exactly. <laughs> and Tiff, to your point, because I think that's great. I really do think that's ultimately going to be this team's flaw. That it's this late into the season, they haven't figured out their identity yet. And now they're going through this change with honestly the last guy you want to really like steer the ship for you right now in the crunch right. time. I, I don't think there's enough time for them to be able to figure out, okay, who are we going to be at the end of the game? You know, right. cause everything is turning into a shootout right now, but eventually we need to figure out this mm -hmm. defense and then it's going to be like a one Oh one, one Oh two game last possession. Who are we in that two minute, uh, yeah. two minute offense? You know, right. Right. I, I don't well, know because... if we're going to figure that out. Well, and I think and the, I think Giannis is being stretched thin, trying to accommodate everybody else, and then playing both right. ends of the floor. Like I think everybody's just a little frazzled, and they play that way. Right. Yeah. Well, it harkens back to what did we see in the playoffs <laughs> last year, where the question to Giannis was, "Why didn't you guard Jimmy in those moments? Mm -hmm. Why you're the best defender? Why aren't you guarding the best player in those moments?" Mm -hmm. Here, so here's the thing this season if we're in the playoffs and it comes down to it's us or it's the Knicks or whoever a lot of these possessions Giannis can't be guarding that person because it, it, if, if you're telling me say Giannis is guarding Brunson okay or I, I think Bronson would love that because he, think passes, he, would he passes the on ball. That matchup. <laughs> he exactly. would matchup. Right. So now you're caught out there because guess what? Yep. So where where's where's Dame and where's Beasley in those moments? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's and so you're like, you know, Giannis, why aren't you guarding the, the best person? And then even still, like you had guys, you had a Chris, you had a Drew who yeah. he could better hide behind. Well, you know, I don't need to guard Jimmy. Uh -huh. I have Chris can guard Jimmy. Drew can try to guard Jimmy. We saw how that went. But like you said, you don't have those guys. And and even offensively for them, they Milwaukee did a bunch of like posting Drew in the off the block. And we ended up with like Gabe on them or something. Right. And like we're forcing doubles. They're getting stuff. They don't have that versatility on either end of the floor. And I agree with both of you in that it come down to like fi some final two minutes. You know, <laughs> what do you do? How do you? How do you kind of orient yourself? But right. yeah, defensively, you got Giannis out, you know, kind of on a on an island or whatever, and mm -hmm. you just have Drew or I'm sorry, Brooke in the back, and you know, Brooke is still Brooke, but he ain't still Brooke. So yeah. right. you know, it's 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 tough. It's like a free safety trying to cover all the ground. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but ain't moving well. Exactly. <laughs> just, 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 just lurching. <laughs> <laughs> just lurching in the back. <laughs> Um, we just spent a lot of time talking moment. about <laughs> dangerously lurching. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We we spent a lot of time talking about Milwaukee. So I'm gonna say this. I'm guessing Adam Silver does not want an all-star game in Milwaukee, right? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Adam, so we gotta talk about these requirements for cities to have all-star games. Like 24 so, hours after the Indiana game. Too. Right. It's the so, timing of it. <laughs> so listen to this. Never listen doing to this. this again. Nope. So we got to have 7,000 plus hotel rooms, three to five star hotels. Okay. We got to have a convention center that can, that has at least 650,000 square feet of exhibition space. Right. Cause we know we got to have them Jordans up there on them bricks. Oh yeah. yeah, and then oh, yeah. we got to have seventy-five non-stop flights, <laughs> and at least twenty international flights going in and yeah. out. Right? Yeah. Every city. The fourth can have one. It. There cannot be an Applebee's and Chili's on the same street. I'm sick of that shit, Indiana. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need both of them. Wings suck. Exactly. <laughs> so here's the thing: we got how many NBA cities? Well, we got twenty-eight. 29, 28, 29. 28, 32 teams. 30, yeah, three I LA teams. I don't know the, I don't know the metric system. It's, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, fuck them numbers. It's in there it's somewhere. Y'all know what yes. I'm saying. 20 plus. Boom. So we're literally telling cities that pay hard-earned pennies. 
Don't even try it. Don't even go for it. For real. That's basically saying, okay, see, sorry, never going to see you. Right. right. <laughs> Here, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because we are saying that to OKC. Yes, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't but, be. But who plays for OKC? Exactly. Chet. See, the guy that's going to be starting <laughs> for, but, well, two of them, actually. You're right. You're yes. right, Siobhan. <laughs> yes. Two Chet starters and for Chet. 10 years. Right. Yeah. So what are we doing? <laughs> you know what they're Fucking doing? Panicking. They're, they're, they're trying panic. to get they're trying to get stars to actually go out there and you're telling people, listen, you got a week off. Here's the downside though. You gotta go to OKC. You gotta do a bunch of like these right. events now and, yeah. and lose four days of your seven or eight day vacation, you know? Right. I do think I do think that is a legitimate problem, and that's why you're seeing these rules. Because they're like, we're not going to be able to convince them to somebody to come down and give up four days of vacation, but unless we're like in LA. You but know? here's the problem with that: if you can't have an All Star game there, why you got a team there? Mm, well, yeah. I, because favorite. because yeah, if it, I'm not if I'm not good enough to host the Crown Jewel event, then why it, are you siphoning yeah. my money to? Uh -huh. yeah. But let's be honest: how many cities? I mean, you'd be getting rid of a lot of the teams then. Well, it's I, easier I, to count I, I, than cities that you can have. It's right. Like LA. But that's a, but it's New a York. problem though. We yeah. ain't got nobody in Vegas. <laughs> Miami. Like, like, yeah, I'm not trying to run the OKC, but I'm just saying if I own the team <gasps> in OKC, I, yeah. why right? <gasps> See, Melody she, agrees. She gets, Melody, it. She gets it. Like, why can't I submit my bid? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I mean, I'm so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said, "Here, take this shit. You won." Girl, my free and I didn't even expect that tweet to go up like that. But I, I had to rewind it. I said, "Adam, hold on. What was he, he said for the East? You scored the most points. Points. Well, well, well uh, I guess it's game's over." Uh. <laughs> he was so mad, yo. So pissed. But this I is, mean, but, listen, but this is his, but. It's his, yep. but it's his. Yep. You fix it. You literally walked your dog in the front of your house, and you didn't, and you didn't pick up the shit. Then you went outside on Tuesday with your brand new Jordans, and guess what you did? Step in, in snow covered shit because we were in Indiana. Exactly. <laughs> so nobody fault it is yours. it is a serious problem though like we joke around about it every year because we know that no, the is. same fucking problems are coming up every year but it is something the league needs to figure out like as much as i say get rid of the all-star game get rid of the slam dunk put it on ice for two years like let people want it you know they, they physically cannot do that the money in the league that they make off the all-star weekend that's a big deal for them you know that's where they get in the sponsors and all that like this is a terrible showcase of it, but it's an important <laughs> money making weekend for the NBA. So they need to figure it out because they have a legitimate star problem and it's all star yeah. weekend. Can't, well, they have can't a, do it that way. Well, he, well, we, he talks about that, but he also talks about the importance of him trying to get more youth involved in the games. And I always say, because I work with the youth, the problem is the youth can't afford your games. Mm -hmm. The youth can't afford league pass. The youth can't afford nosebleed in most of the cities. Like yep. nosebleed tickets should not be 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. Like that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. On top of, especially I live in New York. So I'm paying 100 bucks nosebleed. I'm paying for either uh the metro or mm -hmm. you're oh, paying yeah. for it's not just you know, the game exactly the i i gotta put i gotta get there so and it's like you gotta okay, eat something and, and the kids yeah. want to eat something because lord knows are you letting them bring in their own food like know. you know you're not letting <laughs> them bring in water so now they got to get water they got to get this it's just not attainable for most of these people yeah. and he wonders why like this is part as why the ratings are down because these kids can click on YouTube for free 99. Yeah. yeah. They can't. Next day they can watch it. the game in seven minutes and let's there be honest go. for their attention span. That's, that's all it. they want to watch. Anyways, they can that's get it, it down to six minutes. It'd be even better. Exactly. <laughs> it's just yeah. not, it, it, it's not attainable for most of them. So, and I think that like, um, 
while the all-star game and all those things are great fun and grand but it's still all just a money grab and yet you you want to reach into the pockets of those that don't have it this yep. is why you suffer yep i totally you have your 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 fans priced out of out of the all-star weekend you have your your like die hard real fans priced out of some of the regular season games right. like i hate what happened with oakland and golden state leaving freaking yeah. the wizards are about to leave dc yep. and go to money making war machine tote in northern virginia and like that's a completely different you know yep. socioeconomic yep. class yep. like it's a it's a whole different thing so you're absolutely mm -hmm. right and it, it and you see it it's like all-star weekend from a competitive standpoint and just a the the I don't know the logistics and kind of culture surrounding the NBA currently. All Star Weekend when bad is like the worst amplification of all of the bad things <laughs> about. Yeah. Again, from all threes, nobody care, no defense, no atmosphere. It's just all of right. the bad at once. Right. And that's the thing. And I think that like I've I've never been so aware of like what it's like going yep. to a game since I moved to New York. And mm. the contrast of going to Madison Square Garden and going to Barclays. The, mm. it, it is literally like if I decide on Tuesday I'm going to vacation in, I don't know, in, 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 in like the smallest town in Indiana, right? Mm. Oh, I'm going to vacation to Gary, Indiana on Tuesday. Shut but then on here. Friday, girl. I'm, I'm I'm about to go to like Barbados, the Bahamas, right. like right. you know, and and guess what, the Bahamas is not Barclays. <laughs> yes, <laughs> correct. It is it is it is quiet, and yeah. whoever the opposing team is, that's who the fans are cheering for. Oh yeah, it's oh, it. Yeah. It is quite interesting to sit there and have them cheer for the other people. Can I can I can I stir in some mess? Yes. When you went to the Liberty Games, when you went to right. those WNBA games, though, right. was it that way? No, 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 no. First of all, my eight-year-old noticed the contrast between <laughs> going to a Liberty game and going to a Nets game. Yeah. We go when we go to the Liberty game, she understands that it is loud as hell. Everybody's cheering. The music is pumping. You probably got a little Kim at the halftime. Like it's it's nice, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. She said to me when we went <laughs> to the Heat game, she said, "I thought they were Nets fans." <laughs> <laughs> and why they always got a different coach? What's going on there? A different exactly. guy. <laughs> but, that's, but when an eight-year-old understands yeah. that the atmosphere yeah. is not for the home team, that's a yeah. problem. Like yeah. these are the things that they should be looking into as to why this is a home arena for all the other teams. <laughs> like yeah. these the, these are these are the things that are the problems that I don't think that like they really care about because outwardly we want to hurrah 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 about all the problems, but we still taking all the money. Yep. And you can't have it both ways. At some point, if you want to address and genuinely get to the not the root to, to the rut, like really, really get right. down to the issue of some of the problems, a solid chunk of the time, it might come at the expense of, you know, some of the money. But then that's when quarter you, billion dollars. You're, yeah. Right. You're, <laughs> you're weighing like right. what, what matters more. Do I really want to fix this or, you know, I'm cool to just keep cashing out. Right. Well then, and then it also like it trickles down to the players too, and I mean that in a bad way. Like, yes. look at the players yeah. now; they are disengaged with the All Star Game. Uh, yeah. The Nets players are disengaged with their own fan base because they don't right. feel like they have a fan base. So that shit all right. goes down it's the funnel and hits right. everybody. Right. Yeah, it's hard to have a fan base when your fans are bridging tunnel. I'm weak. And by bridging, I. And and I don't and let me I don't know if people out there know what that means, but like, you know, Knicks fans, half of them are walking to the garden. Half of them live, you know, close yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. Bridge mm -hmm. and tunnel is like you are literally coming from outside of Brooklyn 
like oh, full wow. on. Actually, I didn't know that, taken, Tiff. I didn't you might have taken a bus from Jersey. You might have had, yeah, like there, a lot of the fans are transient. Like it's not, it's Brooklyn is not the their home. Yeah. And then a lot of the fans are also like young fans. Like they don't well, know, course, yeah. they don't know Kenny Anderson wore the blue, the powder blue. Like they don't know, you know, so it's, you don't feel. They don't know Kenny Anderson. Fuck. Exactly. <laughs> so you don't, you don't, you don't feel that love that you feel. And I'm not a Knicks fan, but you right. can feel it when you're at the garden. Yeah, like there's sure. gotta be something that kind of infuses more life. And I know it's going to be a lot of Nets fans going to be mad at me, but like y'all act like y'all don't notice it. Yeah. But I do. Brooklyn ain't even Brooklyn. Like no. Brooklyn is not Brooklyn no more. And I no. feel like it, all of it kind of just plays into, you know, how you see it reflected in the audience. It is. And I didn't mean to get too serious. If y'all, you know, you no, listen to this tomorrow discussion. in your car, we need but to have this it. is, yeah, but this is what yeah. it is. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> we, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to lighten the mood now. And we are going to talk about the Knicks because I did have a, I had a fan question. How do the heat stack up against the Knicks? Which one? Fine, y'all you wanna, take this one first. You I was going to say, one which first. one of y'all want to put this in the headlock? Child, if we were cards to be stacked, the Knicks are built in a way to knock all that shit down. <laughs> um, you know, if for nothing else, then just by just by the kind of the sheer makeup and the body types of Brooklyn. Julius, people, Frankie likes to joke that like the Knicks are the, the Julius trade away. Like get rid of the Orange Julius. Julius. You know, they'll be fine. <laughs> but I disagree with Frankie. And I love Frankie, but Julius is body type, stout, dense. Like, like very dense. Jul- uh, Jalen Brunson, dense, big barrel chested, fucking OG, just, just a, a defensive freak and just like a gorgeous frame. I, I don't know how we stack up against them. I feel like I have a better, clearer vision of how they should stack up against us. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I genuinely expect the Knicks to be one of the toughest um, matchups come postseason and i haven't always felt that way they've been they've been on the build um mm-hmm. they've been you know steadily improving steadily rising i genuinely feel like the knicks are are a tough out this season and white dante is doing white dante things like it's my guy, they, it's my guy. they have a yeah. they have a, a good group yeah i yeah, didn't so answer on, the question, I, I totally but... no but but honestly I I almost totally agree with you because I do agree with Frankie that like they scare me, but they scare me because I do feel like they have the pieces and they're one move away. You know what I mean? So, so they scare me for maybe more for next year, but I do think that like, you know, they, we say heat and five. No, I think that goes seven. And I think that both teams come out really banged up. You know, like I think, I think that matchup is going to be really tough. I hate to say it, but, you know, credit to the Knicks, the way they built it out and those trades that they made at the deadline. Yes. It really, truly improved mm-hmm. the team. It put more place. It put the pieces in better places. You know, yep. the, the synergy is so much better there now. I think OG has really been a revelation for them. I think he's unlocked a lot of things, both offensively and defensively, mm-hmm. because like I said, it moves pieces around, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think they're going to be a very tough matchup. Do I think we can beat them? Always. Always, I think that Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolstra, I will always pick them. But mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler's gonna maybe fuck up his ankle again or something like some shit's gonna go down. That's gonna be a really <laughs> difficult and physical yeah. matchup. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it, it's gonna be a bloodbath. I really do. But what you know, what Nick's heat matchup isn't? It, it's always right. physical. Yeah. Right. I think um it's interesting because you really you really look at that series and say for me and i and i and i'm curious what you guys think because yeah one it, it, i definitely think it goes 7 but two who has the second best player see that's a controversial second, question second best uh huh because we already for, for know. Team. Well, you're we, saying, you're because, saying who's second best player on each team. I, yeah, I, I, st- I still go yeah, Miami. Because we already know Brunson's going to do his thing. And God willing, Jimmy will go out there in a wheelchair and do his thing. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
but they'll find a way to cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, that's my, that's how I look at it. I genuinely kind of feel like, ooh, so I won't, I won't split the, I won't, I won't go into why I feel like they differ, but I do think pieces of Bam and Julius wash out. Mm -hmm. For me, it's who is that third person? Mm, okay. Who who is okay. our third and who is New York's third and who feels more confident in their third? Because I think, <clears throat> and it, again, it might be controversial. I think um, Julius has a bit more to his offensive game than Bam, just in a couple, like in a, a few different, like really particular areas. I know Bam defensively is going to do what, you know, Bam does. Julius has the body and Julius uses his Julius's strength translates different than Bam strength. And that's the case for Bam up against like a lot of different people. Uh, whereas Bam is like hella explosive, like very springy, you know, the up and down thing. Like Julius is a type of guy that's built to go forward and kind of through. Um, and I think that that plays into how their games actually manifest on the floor. So I'll, I'll just cancel those two out. I think it comes to, what do the third who do the who, who do the third people on each team look like and at that point I want to say I think boy wonder has it but who? again boy Tyler wonder. who the fuck is I, that I know right I know right yeah, yeah. um I want to say Tyler that, right? has it yeah. I'm weak but you know again you catch Dante on the right day you catch you know OG defensively both ends of the floor you know not Tyler's position but Overall, mm -hmm. is OG, but like you know, so I, I don't know. It's tough for me, Javon. I I kind of agree with you because I look for me the second best guy is Bam. I do put him above you know Julius, and and I don't even I hesitate that. at that. But I where that. I agree with you is you're saying it's going to come down to the third guy. I kind of agree with that because I was going to say I think it's really going to depend on who's got the better shooting in the series. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a series where like you're, the three ball is going to be very, very important. Yeah. And whoever's on it in that series is going to really run right. away with it. So yeah. I can make the case for Duncan. I yep. could make the case mm -hmm. for Tyler. I could even make the case for Nico if he gets some minutes in there. You know, like I, right. I do think the shooting is going to be very crucial <clears throat> in that particular series. Yeah. And the funniest thing is, quiet as it's kept, I've already made my mind up. And I'm going to tell you who, if they don't have a good series in that series, I don't think the Heat win. And it ain't who y'all think it is. It's Terry. Okay. It's Terry. Okay. That's a good answer, though. Because you don't yeah. have anyone that can get to the rim. Yeah. yeah. And against that team, you need someone getting downhill quickly. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Because yeah. you don't, you know you don't want to give them the opportunity to set up. Yeah. Before Someone you that said can Terry, keep up with Brunson's quickness too. That's a good answer. I, I thought you were going, but for similar answers, he he does it in a in a weird, like silky kind of way, not off of a bunch of dribble moves. But I thought you were going to kind of maybe lean Caleb, um, someone who is also quick, twitchy. But aside from Terry, Caleb is one right. of their most consistent downhill threats. Yeah. He finishes right at the rim. But um, but I agree with you on the premise of just being able to, to yes. get forward. Yeah. Well, because I think that, like, um, he himself in a series like that needs to be that first that first fast break. He also might need to be a secondary fast break by himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just just and whoever go, whoever can run with him, run with him. But I, I think personally, he's the one X factor that can keep them just on their heels consistently. I didn't even think about Terry. But he got, I don't know why I didn't think about I forgot he was on Tyler. the team. I'm not yeah, going like, to I started watching last night. So. But what worries me is that he's <laughs> he's got to make those shots. That's yeah. where he's – because he hasn't had a good season at the rim. But he can get there. So if yep. you could get there, that's half the battle. But I am literally um, – I'm penciling him in as an X factor yeah. in that series. I like um, it. Yeah. So well, we're going to need him in the postseason regardless. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't oh, agree yeah. with you more. I think his ability to get to the rim is something that this team is desperately in search of and lacking you, and needing. You know yeah. what else? And, and and to your point about whether or not he actually gets legitimate time, and again, it might be a lot to put on the youngster, but um, shades of the Milwaukee game, when you 
First of all, the Nicola Bam two man is like plus seventeen. It's the highest net yep. rated nice. two man. Ride that shit um, out, Spo. Yep. Ride it like, out. Genuinely, he's a ball handler. He's an elevated sideline. And he's a shooter. You in the Milwaukee game, you had Giannis guarding him, so you had Giannis away from the basket. And now Brook is still mm -hmm. big in Brook, but Bam is quicker, and so he's able to do some things in there. If you get either I don't know Hardenstein or you pulled. I don't think that they put Julius on Nicola. It's probably Hardenstein. Or what's so. the other kid? Yeah. The Mitchell Ro Mitchell mm -hmm. Robinson. If whatever. he comes back, yeah. if, if he comes if, back, if he's right, if you're able to move something large away from the rim, mm -hmm. and you know it's a legitimate option right. out mm -hmm. there, then you know more well, open space and all of that stuff. Right, and that's the thing. Any anyone in that position, yes. When yeah. it's Nikki, when it's Caleb, yeah. when it's Hamish, when it's Kevin. They have to shoot. Yeah. And I don't and I don't care if Kevin takes 10, but if you're exactly. out there, Take you 12. gotta shoot because you yep. need them to come out to you. Haywood. Yes, I don't want right. Haywood losing confidence. Haywood shoot. Exactly. Them. He has to shoot. But yep. that's the thing that like I I always have to I always have to remind people that like when people are saying, Oh, you're missing, they have to take the shot. Yeah. Like it, you, you we can't get into the you're missing because not if taking you don't, the shot is going to make the offense worse. And there you we go. Need, we and need the, them to know that you have get. the green light. Exactly, especially when you are open. There yes. is no reason for you not yep. to take it. You mm -hmm. stop shooting when you're open. Oh, I got you. Oh, that's that's a one matchup. Exactly. But that's that's done. That's that's the thing. We have to remember that no matter who's in that position, they got to shoot, and it doesn't. You know, they're going to make some. They're going to miss some. But you, they're keeping the offense moving. We're not being stagnant because once they exactly. stop shooting, we are easier to guard, and people don't mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got two bonus questions. One, okay. All right, the Heat have a young core now. <laughs> is this a great young core we're moving forward with, or is this a young core we might be stuck in the mud with? Moose, I'm gonna come to you. Oh, do that. But what do you? Mm -hmm. But what do you mean by stuck in the mud with? Like that we wouldn't be able to move them for something else? Is that what your point is? No, because everybody's movable. Right. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean it's gonna be the the ace in the hole that most people want. But everybody's right. tradable. Like we have. To, right. We, we know that. So no, just kind of. I, I think I think uh, between Hakez and Nico, you have really nice pieces to move forward with. Do I think that that's going to be like the centerpiece of this quote unquote next rebuild? I think it's way too early to to call that out. You know, I mean, shit. I thought Tyler would have won an MVP right now by by the way his rookie year <laughs> went. You know, like it's too early to tell, but I do see enough there where I'm like, yeah, I want to continue to grow this. And I think these pieces can do us more benefit than trading them away right now, you know, but for the right piece, man, talk to me in the off season. We'll see. <laughs> I wasn't that impressed with uh JJJ at the uh, dunk contest. So, you know, uh, he's movable. <laughs> <laughs> Take that fucking hat with him. <laughs> Take me out, Brass. <laughs> Go ahead, oh, Bond. me? Um, mm -hmm. I think it depends on who you consider is part of the core. And again, we don't have to um, get that messy about it. But I, I think that, um, you know, all things fair, if, if the core in, in mind is Tyler Bam, and are we just talking young in age? Because by this point, Bam's not young anymore. Yeah, I didn't um, classify Bam as young. But so I know good, that he's, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. I know that he would be the pillar around which the right. other three youngins um, would be. Right. Bam is young er, than Jimmy, than Terry. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? So he is in that. He's in but that. But is court. older than Tyler uh -huh. and the rest of them. He's smack right. in the middle. Yeah. Right. Um, Grownish. Shout out to them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bam, Tyler. Nicola Jaime, if that is the four that I'm I'm thinking about, I think it's I think it's solid. Um, I could understand the wanting to move a piece or two. I think it depends on what the piece is and who the piece you're getting back is, mm -hmm. of course, as it always does. Um, but I think that there is a solid chunk of versatility within that four. Um, and 
I personally am on board to keep all four of them. At the very least, I think you should hold on to three of the four. Yeah. Not gonna say, you know, what the fourth would be or whatever, but I, I think I think it's it's more than um work withable. If you look at the other young cores kind of around the league and you have like OKC, you have Memphis, um, and you know, I think I'm probably drawing a, a blank from there. I don't think, you know, San Antonio has Wimby, but I don't know if you feel like Jeremy Sohan is I, I mean, Keldon right. Johnson, you know, there there are right. there are mm-hmm. there are teams with with young cores. I think we have a I think we have a good one. Yeah, I think ours, ours is a little bit higher of a level than that, to, to Shabon's point. Like yeah, I agree. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um okay, and and with that said, finally. <clears throat> Can well, what we do you move? think? Can we ask you? Yeah, you sure can. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah. she's like, get if, the if, fuck out of here. Get him out. If I had, <laughs> if I had my druthers, <laughs> come on, druthers. <laughs> yes, you know, like, I mean, I I'm jealous. I sit back and see what OKC cooking. Yes. Yeah. Like. I agree. How could anybody not look at that I, core I and look be at like, what That's Orlando cute. is cooking and look at I what like Orlando, Orlando is putting together? Ooh. It's cute. It is. Um, I've I've been clamoring for a young gun, so I'm with you. Yeah. But but yeah. only to like be you know counterpoint is a little bit easier in their sense because they were in the top five in the draft. You right. Know? Well, of course. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit easier they, to get a young yeah. gun when you're in the top five. Right. 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 Haven't been in that position. Right. But I. But that's the thing. It's like. I'm jealous, but at the same time, it's, yeah. I, I've I've been on record to state like, okay, um, we didn't get Dane. That's cute, whatever. Like, it ha- whatever happens, happens. We just got to move forward. But ev- you know, but I keep seeing on my timeline when we get Dane this summer. Okay, so <laughs> we got. Sorry, I, I thought I mean, my tweets I, were I, private. <laughs> <laughs> But like, can we can we actually pretend that like, all of a sudden, we want to give up everybody for Dame now, or they're not gonna ask for everybody for Dame now? Because the world has seen don't what look Jaime at me. Do. I told y'all the world has seen what Jovic can do. So right. you so now you're playing a little dangerous game, thinking that the Bucks are gonna say. You can have him for this box yep. of cookies and Thomas yep. Bryant. Because I was I, trying to tell y'all from the beginning it was going to cost everything. This is how, just how I felt. But mm-hmm. now, again, like you said, now we've got even more evidence of what these things can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely need Jaime. Oh, I definitely need Nicola. Yeah. What are you talking Which about? they should ask for, obviously, yeah. if they're smart. Uh, 100%. Yes, so, that, that is how okay. negotiations work. You start right. high and then you meet. The so, let's play this, yeah. so let's play this game. This is what we got. Are we turning it over for Dame in the summer, Moose? Because they're gonna wanna, ask for all of it. Now, okay, I, I, I want to preface. You can't. Preface I just want to say. No, no, I'm just gonna say. I want to preface this by saying that, like, I don't actually think this is gonna happen because I don't think the Bucks will ever. No, no, no. Move I don't think it's gonna happen time. either. Yeah. But this is hypothetically speaking. So hypothetically speaking, and we're talking. I'm like, obviously, I'm not moving Bam. I know we're talking about him as a young right. gun. Obviously, I'm not right. moving Bam. No, no, no. Would Bam's move, not going anywhere. Would I move Tyler for Dame? Yes, I have to because of the money. Sorry, yep. Tyler. It's not like right. I still love you. You're still my boy. It's just about making the money work. Would I move Jaime and Nico for him? No. Yeah. One of the two, and I'm kind of more leaning Nico, to be honest, only because <laughs> I think Jaime, I think you're going to need him, especially if you bring in Dame. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that you're going to give up by actually acquiring Dame. And I mean that on the defensive end. So I feel like Jaime can actually stay out there. Whereas I don't necessarily trust Spo to, to ride out the Nico thing. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, so in that sense, but I'm not giving up the farm the way I probably would have last off season to okay. answer your question. Okay. All right. Bye. Don't ask me. I wasn't giving it to you this last off season. Yeah. I'm her stance hasn't changed. To- Shout out I'm not giving it to you <laughs> this off season. Um, and I, I do agree uh, de- again, depending on how it's broken down, I am not begging to move Tyler. Um, if it were Tyler and I don't know, Tyler, Caleb, Tyler, Josh in the second, so one of those things I do it. Um, yes, I so. definitely don't move both of the kids. 
Moose, I differ with you on who the kid it you is that Nicole. I would move. I love Nicola, and I very, very much so love Me too. Jaime. Me too. Um, I think, again, for versatility's sake and for size and the upside, and I don't know if he hits his upside, but I do think Nicola's upside is higher than Jaime's, but I think higher's, yeah. Jaime's like consistency and probably longevity mm. is solid. Um, but you know, definitely not moving to, but again, I'm not in the, I'm, you asked me, I'm not moving either of them. I'd rather stay, keep all four of those, those people than, than go the Dane route. But again, I've been here since before this off season. Yeah. We ain't getting Dane, but no, <laughs> no, I just, I, just it happen. No, that's I really don't. I really don't. No, you know, people, I don't are think... talking, people talking Donnie though. I mean, well, Donnie. I've always been in on Donnie. I know that we differ on this, but I've I've always been the Don. I've come guy, around, and I genuinely so believe as like, we as the only a while ago, as the only Cavs fan here. Right, right. Talk it. I've been watching them all season. Yeah, and I'm gonna say this because I was not a fan of old square head. Okay. No, you weren't. We we got. I into was it. not. But <laughs> let me tell you something. Moose. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for it because it's been enough time now. I want to hear it. <laughs> no, because it's because you have you. But what There's you were advocating, moves. yeah, what yep. you were advocating for with him, Moose. This is not this is not your grandfather's Donnie Mitchell. His whole game looks different this season. Absolutely, I told there you. Is a, the there is a there is an entire new level of maturity. But I knew that, that was coming. That big comes part. with getting older. <laughs> the, he has elevated no, his no, scoring ability, his passing, his defense is even at a different level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that's He's all tightened new. up. His, yes. his game has tightened up. Yes, He's yes. always good, but he got a little bit loose, and I mean that on yep. the defensive yep. and all that. Yep. No, yep. he is clamped down now. Yes. Like, he's his body. ball handling is better. His is whole much less game. less wasted energy yes. all yes. over the place. Yes. His yes. entire yes. game is different. Yes, now, sir. if that call is made, hello, the kid, the the, the I don't know. It it'll no, be very for the, for dicey. One, no, for that because, one, I'm taking because the airport myself. I'm telling yeah. you, but but that's because I think you need to out or not outbid, but I don't no, necessarily. You do. have, I don't necessarily <laughs> think we have the pieces to get the deal done. That's why you got to come in hot with like, okay, yeah. the kids, the picks, like you got to make yeah. a statement to no, be at you the table. Do. Because you got to remember, the Knicks still got 37, 40, Child, 199 that's the one that picks. Me. Girl, that's the one that scares <laughs> me. They still got all the picks. How so, do you still have 92 picks? <laughs> and and they, they all, all of this look, work. they all the first rounders. <laughs> Man. Like, how, girl? How? Um, but no, I have my stance on Donovan Mitchell has changed. Same. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it has, but that's also because I've seen growth in his game. Right, and I've right. seen a certain level of maturity in his game. So, yeah. So if if that came to be, then hey, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I'm at to turn my head the other way and just let it happen. Yeah. But, I mean, it, I it would definitely it would require some work on Donovan Mitchell's end as well. And I hate saying that because we just saw what happened with Dame. But I say that because I don't think we have enough pieces to get a deal done. No, no, you don't. But I also think. There's different relationships there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he has been nothing but pleasant since he's been in mm -hmm. Cleveland. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I do think they got there about are... nine more months of that until it wears exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's I think it's you know the relationships are different, but I, I I'm there with you. I'm not giving up the farm. I don't think Dave's going anywhere. Um and for the record, I don't think Donovan Mitchell's going anywhere either. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I didn't say he was signing the extension. I'm just saying, I don't think he's going to go anywhere next season. Yeah. You think they're going to hold on to him and, and ride out the postseason run to see what happens? Uh, why wouldn't you? No, I, I don't disagree with you. I actually think that that is the thing to do. Yeah. I think at any time, anytime you actually feel like you have a chance, yeah, write it yeah. out and see what happens. Yeah. So, so I, I don't, I don't think you. that's, you know, I don't really think it's going to be a viable option this summer. Um, so with that being said, this leads into my final bonus question. Do we think Tyler and Terry 
can be our backcourt moving forward. And I mean forward as into into hey, just next this year season. or like next year. No, 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 no. <laughs> into into the future. I think I gave away my answer. I know you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like listen, let, let me say I like both guys. This is nothing against them, like personally. I, I'm actually excited to see how this postseason run plays out with both of them. Mm-hmm. I just don't think mm-hmm. it's a viable backcourt to rely on moving forward. Do I think they will return as the starters next year? Yes, because I don't know how the offseason is going to play out for trades and all that. But if we're talking about like, you know, the next two years and all that, I, I don't I don't think it's the right combination. I <clears throat> I agree with Moose. I think that um as 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 Jimmy ages, I think that what is required of the starting unit um continues to move in a direction of what we have already seen to work. And by that, I mean <clears throat> needing a movement shootery type of guy there. Mm-hmm. And for the record, am I telling you that I want Tyler and Duncan to be my starting back court going forward? Probably not. <laughs> but um, I don't know if there is enough on either side of the ball mm-hmm. to uh, – I don't, uh, and then as soon as I say that, and I believe that, I also have seen Spo do um, a lot of kind of creative things with his substitutions to hide whatever he feels like is his deficiency with the starters. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could very well say, yeah, Tyler and Terry can, you know, be your starting backcourt going into the future, but I'm pulling Tyler at the six minute mark and I'm getting somebody in and I'm not closing with Tyler or I'm cool to not close with Terry. Um, So I I mostly lean lean, uh, like 60, 40, no, Um, but wouldn't be surprised if it went that way. Don't necessarily want it to go that way. though. Right. It's the lack of stability of it. Right. That's, that's what holds it back. Cause it's like, you like both guys, you can see where it works, but the stability factor of like, just to Siobhan's point, you know, you have to substitute out. So that's that's going to catch up to you. That's going to catch up to you. Yeah. Well, you got, well, especially with this team, considering we're, you know, we're a mass unit. So it's like, you, you all, you all, you always keep finding yourself having to configure all these schemes for the lack of play. Mm-hmm. So at some point it does catch up with you. Like that's just, yeah. you know, that's just the reality of it. And we see it with us every postseason. It does yeah. catch up with us at a certain point. Mm-hmm. You know how Tiff, what's the, what you Voltron, right? Like all of the pieces, the you know, kind of having to come mm-hmm. to it. Y'all got to stack. It's, yeah. it's so finicky though, to where like, a certain amount of redundancy and I'll say like between like Tyler and Terry, a certain amount of redundancy to where you, you think that like, okay, I got two guys who can kind of do, you know, similar things. I can use both of them similarly. No, like the, it's, it's a different type of redundancy than what would have been say, like, let's say like a Duncan and Max. Um, Mm -hmm. if, If Max is doing his catch and shoot things, Duncan is doing his shooting things, but they come different ways in a way that like allows a more cohesive kind of fit. Absolutely. There's, there's, it's like, there's, but so much like free reign, the, the orbital of of each player can have before it gets dangerously too close to the next. And then it becomes, you know, kind of unstable. It's, it's so precious the way that every single piece kind of has to come together because it is, put together in a way that requires the one next to it to come together in a certain way and the one right. on the other side. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, like a finely tuned watch. It is. And our battery be dying. Ooh. Man, that rolly be TikToking. Ooh. I it shouldn't be. <laughs> you oh you why my so why my so loud. You made the you made the assumption we ain't rocking with a Timex. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That time makes us 30, you know? Uh, Reliable. Uh, uh, one more thing before we get out of here. Moose, where do we finish the season? In the top what? Ooh. Well, we finished the year as number one with the championship. That's how we fucking finish oh it. Brad, take me out! <laughs> oh, different show. Different show. Uh, no, real talk. I think we would probably seven seed. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> no, listen. Listen, I, I think I think we get out of the mud. I'm hoping we get out of the mud. But if, if you're making me bet on it, I really do think that you know we'll be we'll be back in the play in. We'll, we'll figure that out. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. And again, going back to my earlier point, Spo, keep developing the young guys. I know it sounds crazy. I really do think those young guys can help you get out of the play in. You need them. You need everybody. Bon, what do you got? So I, <clears throat> I'm looking at the standings right now. We are a game. Are we seventh? I, yep. No, we're eighth right now. Okay. We are um, tied. Well, the Orlando has one up on us because they've played one more game than we have. Um, we're eighth. We are a game and a half behind Philly, who is in fifth. Um, I don't know what I feel like Philly has been on a little bit of a skid. Maybe I could be making that up. Maybe that was only Milwaukee. The MB thing um, threw them off a little. Yeah, yeah it, did. it did. Yeah, but they I Nick Matoon has done things for them. I still like mm-hmm. Tobias Harris. I I hate what happened to Kyle tonight. I hope he's okay. Um I what I will say is we have, I think, the one of the top four easiest strength of schedules the rest of the way. Mm, um okay. And someone tweeted that yesterday or a couple of days ago. It might have been like Anthony Chang or someone kind of in that <clears throat> in that orbit. Um, we have a really, really favorable strength of schedule going forward. Right as we are entering our, you know, ramping kind of up period. So strength of scheduling is going down. Our play is going up. You know, I, I hope that that would land us somewhere cool. I don't know. <clears throat> home how court? Indy- oh, girl, too much. You think home court? <laughs> I, I, no? I, I, this home court top four, right? Top yeah, four. I, we not getting top four. four. See, I don't know because yeah, Indiana's right here, six. Like, you got to get to the Knicks, and I don't know that that happens. Yeah. yeah. So probably not. But I think we, I could, I could see us getting up to six, no higher than like five, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> I got us getting to six. Yeah. Okay. I got us getting to six. I think for me, the the one thing. I'll say where, and I I never put any burden on Jimmy. That's one thing I'll never do. But the one thing I will say about Jimmy, he doesn't need home court advantage to do his yep. thing. Oh no, he doesn't. We, so, we saw that. I, yeah. So if if you could get to six, then I mm-hmm. think you're okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I totally agree. Just get get out of those extra get, games that you have to that's play. That's it. I, that you don't tears, need, yeah. yeah. You don't want to get in. You don't want to get into that play in. Also, because guess what? If Duncan has one bad game in the play in, yeah, you you might be going home a lot sooner than you thought. So, I think you you got to get out of there. I think they could get to six, and I don't worry about them having home court because I think between Jimmy and Bam. And regardless of people say they don't play well together, they looked real good together last postseason. Um, Jimmy and Bam have enough wherewithal to play well together on the road. So I, I, and, and, and let's be honest, I'm really tired of Tyler not being available. So this is the season. I need you to be available. Like we, we supposedly got a three, Girl, we only been having a two. So I need I I need you to pitch in. I need you to be healthy. I need you to wrap those feet because apparently now your foot is something or other. <laughs> like I, I need you to be a full participant in yep. what's about to take place. Yep. Yeah. Listen, because I, I know I'm the Tyler Stan in this in this uh heat network, but I totally agree with you, Tiff. And with the way he's been dressing this way, uh dressing this year, I don't want to <laughs> So <laughs> that, that fucking hat, that hat took me out on him for real. Trade him. Yeah. Say it. Oh, uh, it's like we've been playing spades and making like three spades man. walk. Like it's, we've been honestly, though, it's it's not even his play. It's his dress. I want him gone. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's too far. That's too far. Don't put that. And, 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 <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can't look at it either. And on that note. I want to thank I want to thank these guys for showing up tonight. Even though we've been we've been off for a while, Moose, where are you? Tell the people where they can find you. Not your address. I am back. I am at seven four. Oh, not the address. Okay, uh, at <laughs> Alex Musabai on Twitter. You guys can catch me. The name's right there. <laughs> 
Bond, tell the people where you are. I am on Twitter as well, at Siobhan Beslow. Don't know why I didn't put my last name up here, but if you know it, you know it. <laughs> um, I'm on the timeline doing this film thing. I tried a playback, um, a film breakdown on playback uh, about last week. First one went really nicely. Looking to probably do some some more things up there. So, yep, nice. I'm mostly on the timeline. All right. nice. and, uh, I forgot I wanna... just because Frankie's Go gonna ahead. get mad and I get fined for mm -hmm. this. I'm sorry. At Stream Beat Pod, a Love Is Blind Megapod coming up soon. I'm speaking that into Whoa. existence. Ooh, megapod. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. want to thank my shadow producer Brian M. Brian M. Tell the people where they can find you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll just see Brian like you in your see... likes, like... but like nowhere on the actual line. <laughs> exactly, and and that's okay. Um, and you guys know where you can find me, Tiffany Meeks 23. Um, and I just want to say thank you, whoever was out there, because obviously I can't really see the chat, but thank you for showing up. Thank you for watching it on Twitch. I appreciate it when you hit this up um, in your ears and in your eyes. So when you're listening to this on Apple, uh, Spotify, all those things, when you watch the replay on YouTube, leave some comments, some likes, some jokes, all those things. And as I always like to say, you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. Tip, yes. can I slide in one thing? And I might ask you to, to wrap your thing up one more time. Yes. Um, <clears throat> if you if you head to my to my Twitter timeline, I got a kind of important thread happening right now. Um, lost a, a teammate that I played in college with. Um, family is asking, you know, for for some well wishes, and it was pretty sudden. So if you could, you know, find that thread, boost that thread for me. Um, and, and just send send some love, send some light to, to some people that need it. And and that's it. Remember, everybody, <clears throat> we regardless of where you are in the world, you are always needed. You are always seen. You are always heard. And somebody always needs your love. Thank you for showing up. And we'll see you soon. Keep you